Welcome to my talk, What to do when SRE is just a new job title. When the SRE book was published in 2016, the job title SRE was not widely used outside Google. Fast forward five years and it seems like every company is hiring SREs. Did the sysadmin and operations job disappear or have their job titles simply changed? In this talk, I want to share with you how traveling has helped me building the better teams and what you can do if you have a team that has only the name in common with SRE. After traveling North and South America for almost three years, it was time for me to go back home and work again. I've joined Ricardo, a Swiss online marketplace. Ricardo was launched in 1999 and is now counting more than 4 million registered users. Every year, over 5 million items change hands through our platform. The company just had a major transformation behind it. They migrated everything from their old data centers into the cloud, completely changed how to make software, and in addition to that, switched the tech stack. After the successful migration, the people who orchestrated the move into the cloud and who had operated Ricardo's infrastructure in the past were put into a new team, the SRE team. I was hired to lead this team. I quickly realized that the people who were left as the SRE team were not really a team. After the successful migration, they were left with no purpose. There was no hardware left to maintain, no network to set up, and the DBAs were basically told they are no longer needed. They had no common goal and the company didn't know what to expect from them. Everybody had their own opinion on what SRE or what the SRE team should be doing. Because even though there was no hardware to run, there was still plenty to do. Somebody had to keep Kubernetes up to date. Somebody has to run Prometheus. Somebody has to take care of the CI CD pipelines and so on. But because of this, the team didn't really know what they should be doing. This led to frustration and they felt lost and with no future at the company. People need to know why they should get up in the morning and spend the majority of the day at work. My first action, therefore, was to figure out what the purpose of the team should be. I talked to many people inside the company and also to the team. What are the company goals? What are the pain points? What is the skill set of the team? And how can we contribute to these goals? In the end, the team's mission should give everyone guidelines they can use to ask themselves, what should I be working on? Why am I here? And what has the higher priority? Does this work align with our mission and vision? Should I actually be doing this or not? Now, what should be your purpose? Obviously, this highly depends on your workplace. There is no silver bullet. I've talked to many different people to figure out what the expectations are in Ricardo. And in the end, I was able to formulate a simple mission for the team. Ricardo Essary provides a reliable, secure, an easy to use platform for all engineers at Ricardo. Working with the platform is easy and fun. It prevents mistakes and helps software engineers to make the right decisions. The infrastructure provided by SRE is scalable and can adapt to the future needs of Ricardo. Having a purpose is important, but not enough. Once you have a mission, you can create a plan. Ask yourself what is needed to achieve the goals. When traveling with a car on remote roads, you never know what will happen. You might, just like on the picture, have a fallen tree blocking the road. You either have to turn around and look for a different way, or maybe you have a chainsaw and you can remove the obstacle. The same applies at work. Sometimes there are unsurmountable obstacles and sometimes you can work around them. But the important thing is to stay flexible. Ask yourself if it makes sense to continue on the path you've taken, or if maybe a detour would take you to your goal quicker. Not every roadblock is as obvious as a fallen tree. Sometimes you can barely tell that you've hit one. When you realize that your progress is slowing down, take a break and ask yourself why this is happening. Identify the impediment and remove it. One common issue are interruptions. If you're running an online service, there's always something that needs your immediate attention. Shield your team from these constant interruptions. 
For example, you can create a rotation with one engineer who's responsible to take care of these external requests or production issues. Thanks to this system, the rest of the team will have time to focus on the planned tasks. We know why we are here, we have a plan, we know how to make progress, but what happens if the circumstances change? No product lives in a vacuum. Things change and often we aren't asked. A new competitor is entering the market, new regulations come into place, or a pandemic happens. And I hope we won't see too many of those in our lifetime. When we were in Ecuador, we decided to visit the Laguna with some ni nice hiking around it. The Laguna was quite off the beaten path, but very beautiful. And we were sure it's worth to do this detour. We looked at the map and saw that Google map had a minor road going through the mountains and sparing us the long detour to get back to the main road. Unfortunately, this road turned out to be more like a mountain bike trail than an actual road. But because it was downhill and we were already quite far into it until we realized how bad it is, we didn't have much choice than to continue. It took us 90 minutes to cross about three kilometers. We almost flipped the car, but luckily we made it. Unfortunately, we also bent the part of the steering, but we were able to continue. However, we knew that sooner or later we'd have to replace it. Coming from Quito, the capital of Ecuador, we knew a place that has the part, but it would also mean to go all the way back where we came from and we would lose at least two days, if not three. After some deliberation, we decided to go back and get it fixed. Now, instead of waiting and have it break sometimes in the future, possibly at an even more inconvenient time. I feel like this story is what happens all the time at work as well. These issues, some might call it technical debt, accumulate in every company. And they often get pushed out because it's inconvenient or we think it might slow, slow us down. But it's often better to fix these things when we control the circumstance rather than pushing it out and then we'll have to fix them in a pinch. We can't change the world all by ourselves. We need to build a community of like-minded people. If you want to steer your company into a di different direction, you need allies. And you don't, but you don't have to be a CTO to do that. To learn Spanish, my wife and I stayed in Medellin for four weeks and visited the language school. The school made it a point to not just teach Spanish, but also to teach about Medellin and its past. We visited some of the infamous barriers and heard from the people what it meant to live in these neighborhoods in the 90s and what it took to get out of the violence. Once Escobar was killed, the government, together with the people, started to build public spaces libraries, football fields, and playgrounds. They made room for spontaneous encounters to enable the growth of a social fabric. But they didn't stop there. The government also built basic infrastructure. Medellin is in a valley, and the poor neighborhoods are built on the steep mountainsides. There were no roads and no infrastructure, like electricity or water, to connect the barrios to the city. Therefore, the city built gondolas for people to get to the city center quickly and cheaply. The government attached the barriers to the city infrastructure, like sewage. And the government didn't just come and build all these things. It sat together with the people to figure out what they needed most. Everything together made it possible to overcome the distrust and to improve the situation of the people living there. Of course, our work environment is not the same as a drug or ridden neighborhood. But is there something we can learn from this? If you want to build a culture of engineering where SRE is part of it, it is important that you enable people to meet in public grounds. For example, you could create a reliability guild and invite all engineers interested in this topic. Another possibility is to create the space where engineers regularly can hold tech talks and talk about the problems that they faced and the achievements they had. Create spaces for spontaneous encounters. If you're in a shared office space, this is much easier than online. But even before COVID, for many of us, distributed teams have been the reality. 
I've seen good results with water fountains like gels and regularly scheduled virtual coffee breaks and other activities. Another key tactic I've used is to always have a pair of engineers working on a task. As a central SRE team, you have a very wide array, array of tools and services you must support, usually more than what can fit into one engineer's brain. Any task that the team has to complete is assigned to a primary and a secondary engineer. The primary is responsible for the delivery and the organization of the work. This mini team then can decide on how they work. Depending on the task, they might decide to screen share or pair program, or they might split the task into smaller chunks and review each other's work. This setup has proven vital for the team's success. It enables individual engineers to take over responsibility. It ensures that every engineer keeps up to date with the infrastructure and the tooling we are responsible for. It also ensures that we don't fall into the isolation trap of working from home. This makes people more happy with their job and also increases productivity. If you're not sure where to start, ask your team what they need to stay connected. They often have a very good feeling what is missing. To summarize, one, we need a purpose. Figure out why you're here, what it is you want to achieve with the team. Then you create a plan and identify what's slowing you down. Fix these things first. Do a regular reality check. Does your plan still align with the circumstances and the company goals? If not, adapt. And to be successful, you have to create a community of like-minded engineers. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those in Slack or send me a message on Twitter. Check out my blog for more essay and travel content. And by the way, we are hiring. Go to careers.ricardo.ch to learn more.